Welcome back. Before we go, GMSA would like to wish a happy birthday to Melissa. Melissa, she is the mom to our GMSA producer extraordinaire, Caitlin, and she is an avid watcher of KSAT 12 News. And of course, she loves watching GMSA because her daughter is one of the amazing producers we have here at KSAT. Happy birthday, Melissa. Thank you so much for watching us every morning. All right, time now, 857, just about 70 degrees out. We'll be right back. This morning on GMSA, three area high school football teams going to the state championship game. It's all happening at Jerry World in Dallas. We're going to take a look at how they all got there. Taking a look outside with live cam, 69 degrees. Max says it's nice. I say it's eh. But hey, Sarah has some good news. In three days, things are going to change. She'll explain in just a bit. Good morning. It is just about 9 o'clock this morning. It is Saturday, December 10th. And yes, I'm a fan of 75 and sunny. Not enough sun out there, but I'm happy with the temps. I want sunny, maybe 60, 65. Okay. Low humidity. Low humidity. And is then key. it maybe get up to just 70 in the afternoon. Okay. This is really specific things notes. you want here. <laughs> I'm taking notes. Sarah, if you could bring us that weather, that'd yeah, be great. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, Minus but, the mountain cedar. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah. So honestly, that kind of a change that Sarah was going to talk is talking about it happens a little bit later this upcoming week. First thing to know, though, is that we do have the potential for storms overnight tonight. And another thing to know immediately that will affect you today is that mountain cedar is high in the pollen count for the first time this season, past 1700 pollen grains per cubic meter of air. And on top of that, the molds are moderate too. So not a great day for allergy sufferers. And mountain cedar affects a lot of us around South Central Texas. Here's a look at mountain cedar season. We usually see mountain cedar season peak in the middle of January. So we've still got a while to go, more than a month before the peak, uh, before we see it taper off by about Valentine's Day. So we give you the pollen count every day here on KSAT on air, online, and on that KSAT Weather Authority app. We'll be with you throughout Mountain Cedar season. Right now outside, it is 70 degrees and humid. Dew points are in the mid 60s this morning, and winds are pretty breezy from the south at about 10 miles per hour. There is some mist and drizzle across parts of uh, New, new Braunfels, but generally because we've got that wind from the south, airs, air is mixing up and we're not seeing as much uh, morning fog and drizzle as we had the last couple of mornings. Still though, it is going to be a muggy day, a humid day with a high temperature near 80 degrees, peaks of sunshine. Then overnight, chance for storms. We'll be talking more in depth about the storms coming up in just a few minutes, but it'll allow for slightly lower humidity for your Sunday and slightly lower temperatures too. Of course, details on that more potent cold front in the week ahead coming up in a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Now to that late breaking news we've been tracking throughout the day. A deadly explosion that rocked the south side sending neighbors scrambling trying to figure out what happened. So we're going to get out to our Jonathan Cotto who is live with the latest. Good morning, Jonathan. What have we been able to learn? Good morning, Max. Well, we are learning that this investigation has taken a turn. It is now being investigating as uh, an arson situation. Uh, San Antonio police telling that earlier to us that uh, San Antonio Fire Department has taken the lead in those investigation efforts. But we can take a look at what that scene looked like earlier this morning. We know San Antonio police, along with EMS and other first responders, arrived on the 9700 block of South Presa. This is on the city's south side. We're not too far from Brook City Base. Now, of course, this, the cause of this explosion is still unknown and at this time they are confirming one person is dead. Police are telling us that we are getting as we're getting later into the morning and we now have daylight. They are hoping to uh, wrap up on their investigation efforts and just have a better visual of the situation inside of this private property and uh, determine exactly the cause of that explosion. And more importantly, Max and Sarah, if anybody, anybody else was hurt here this morning. Now the scene here is private property. As I mentioned, part of the reason we're outside of the gates of K bar. Uh, it appears to be a construction company. Um, I did have an opportunity to speak with a gentleman earlier that uh, tells me he's worked for the company for over 20 years. They do street services across the state. And uh, for context, again, this property behind me, if we can come back out live, this property behind me is about 75 acres. So there is a lot of land behind these gates. So where exactly that explosion um, happened is still unknown on our end. We 
are waiting for more information uh, to come out from San Antonio Fire Department again to learn uh, what caused that explosion and more importantly again if anybody else was hurt but here at the gate uh, as I mentioned earlier this morning a lot of traffic just moments ago Max and Sarah I saw a truck pull up uh, a, a gentleman got out and he was speaking with one of the sergeants here on scene visibly distraught visibly emotional um, we have yet to confirm the identity of that one person already confirmed but of course this is a story that we're going to continue to stay on top of and wait uh, to get more information as that is made available reporting from the city south side jonathan Cotto, ksat 12 news thank you jonathan Topping your morning headlines, a new twist in the double murder case of disgraced South Carolina attorney Alex Murdoch. Murdoch is accused of shooting his wife Maggie and 22-year-old son Paul in the summer of 2021 at the family's hunting lodge. Murdoch has pleaded not guilty. His attorneys say he had nothing to gain from those murders. Prosecutors believe he killed his family to gain sympathy and distract from his alleged financial wrongdoings. They claim the former attorney stole money from his clients and law firm to fund his lavish lifestyle, lifestyle, but was on the brink of being caught. Headed to Idaho, investigators still sifting through over 100 pieces of evidence, and they now are going through a mountain of tips, all in this college student murder mystery. Investigators say a white car was seen in the immediate area of the off-campus home where four University of Idaho students were killed last month. Police believe the car's occupants may have critical information to share about the case. The U.S. Border Patrol also aware they're keeping an eye out for the vehicle as the search continues for any sort of suspect. Police now urging anyone who knows anything to avoid sharing misinformation about the case. Well, the new Netflix docuseries released Thursday about Prince Harry and his wife Meghan Markle is apparently causing a royal rift. So Harry and Meghan is already a hit for Netflix with millions tuning in. Meghan's mother is calling out racism, saying that Meghan experienced it firsthand at the hands of the media. Some in the UK press are hitting back. A BBC journalist calling this claim by Meghan absurd. Critics are also asking why they let the Netflix cameras in after the pair had been so protective about their privacy. Back here at home looking ahead, the Salvation Army kettles are out and about throughout San Antonio. Local businesses and media, including here at KSAT, we have our own respective teams and we're all competing to raise money for all the families in need during this holiday season. No matter how big or small, every donation can make such a difference. The Salvation Army says a $50 donation provides a homeless mother with three children a one night stay at the shelter, including hot meals. So you can donate by scanning this QR code on your screen or by heading to ksat.com. And during the season of giving, several organizations are working toward helping families for the holidays. That includes Toys for Tots. Volunteers and hundreds of local businesses are helping. More than 4,000 families are expected to get gifts this year. If you want more information on how to donate for Toys for Tots, just head to ksat.com. Time now, 907, 70 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, so-called Lava junkies, they are flocking to Hawaii to see the eruptions from Mount, Mount, Mount Oloa, how they're getting up close and personal. And three local football teams headed to the state title game next weekend. We're going to look at their journey so far right after the break. Okay, we've hit 70 degrees outside. Another kind of muggy, more spring-like day than really December weather. But Sarah Spivey says things are going to change. She'll explain when we come back. Bless you. Who is that? Wimberley. And there we go, Poth. All past the semifinal round after some huge wins last night. Bernie took on Chapel Hill from the Tyler area in the Alamo Dome. Look at that. Greyhounds raced out to an early lead, going up 14 0 at the half in the third quarter. The Greyhounds, TJ, hitting the hole in the line, and he is off. 82 yard touchdown. You love to see it. Greyhounds up 21 in the final from the Dome, 35 0. We've worked so hard for this. It's just awesome to finally pay off. You know, this senior class, we've been together since seventh grade. We've played every game from football to basketball to baseball to you name it. 
And it's just really special to finally play with these guys on the biggest stage in Texas. Our kids executed basically to perfection. I mean, a shutout. Everyone in my wildest mind thought, I thought we'd shut these guys out. So hats off to our defense. Um, God, what an effort. And number two, Wimberley Quero also are taking on number three, Quero at the Dome. Trail 27-18 at halftime before hitting their stride. 64-yard touchdown, and the Texans take the lead back 31-30. A, a defensive scoop and score. Wimberley threatened to run away with it, up 42-30, but Quero not done yet. Scoring a touchdown, trailing 42-36. One last chance to drive for the win. Same score, 57 seconds. Oh, did not end up the way that they wanted. So Wimberley headed back to the state title game for the first time since 2019. 42-36 is your final. It's, it's amazing. I can't even explain it. <laughs> we just came out and just knew we had to come together or lose together. So we came out as a brotherhood like we are, and we just turned the tables. People out there that doubt us, but those kids, these kids and these coaches, they never do. And they just hung in there and fought and got better each and every week like we asked them to do. Right? And we're able to get it done when, you know, when, when it counted. And got to give shouts to Poth. Coming up on top of their matchup with Harmony, 51-28. Will be the first of three teams playing next weekend up in Jerry World. So congratulations to all the players, all the parents, all the fans, all the bands. A lot going on. And uh, I mean, honestly, I know they played in the Dome, but playing out, it doesn't even feel like it's in the middle of December, Sarah. <laughs> it really doesn't. It's funny how our weather works sometimes, right? Because the ha second half of November was actually pretty chilly compared to what we're dealing with right now. And today we will see more of the same. We're going to see humid conditions and warm weather today. Take a look outside right now with live cam. It is cloudy. A few peaks of sunshine already starting to peek through those clouds there, but it is a warm start to the day. 70 degrees. Just to put this in perspective, for you, our average high high temperature this time of year is 66. So we're already three degrees above what our average high temperature is this time of year. Winds are from the southeast at about five to ten miles per hour, and yeah, it's humid. But we do have perfect visibility around San Antonio, 10 mile visibility. Elsewhere, though, that's not the case. Visibility less than two miles in Rock Springs because of some fog, some mist, some drizzle, down to five miles in New Braunfels, and even visibility down to six miles in uh, uh, New Braunfels for that uh, areas of mist and drizzle out there. But elsewhere, we're seeing good visibility around the Alamo City. Let's take a look at the satellite and the temperatures. Some clearing down near Seguin and Floresville. There's a little bit more sun out there. In Bilverde, though, it's 68 cloudy degrees, 70 in San Antonio, 68 in Rio Medina, 64 in Bernie, and 66 in Bandera. Really cool here because you can also see the upper level clouds streaming northeast while the lower level clouds are streaming in from the south. So pretty cool to see that. Again, temperatures mild in the um, upper 60s and near 70 degrees, and we'll stay cloudy through at least noon when we'll have a few peaks of sunshine. And the temperatures will respond and climb quickly to near 80 degrees this afternoon. Mostly cloudy skies, though, this evening with temperatures only near 70 degrees by 9. So it's going to be a muggy evening. You won't need that jacket if you have uh, plans tonight outdoors. Temperatures are going to be in the 70s. Elsewhere, it'll be 79 in New Braunfels, 81 in Pleasanton, 78 in Hondo, 78 in Carissa Springs, 75 in Del Rio, in the upper 60s up near Rock Springs. But look at Laredo and Catula, 83 for the high temperature today in Laredo and Catula. Then overnight, we are going to see the potential for some storms. Showing you the weather setup right here, some decent storms out uh, toward parts of the Mississippi River Valley around a low pressure system. This low pressure system has a cold front behind it. This is a pretty weak front, but you can see that there are some areas of rain behind this front. Temperatures not all that much cooler behind the front. Yeah, it's in the 30s in the panhandle, which is cold, but if we were seeing a real deal Arctic front, those temperatures would be well below zero, uh, part of me below freezing behind that front. As we look at the future cast, let's talk about our rain. So rain today will be near San Angelo and up toward Dallas. This is a snapshot of 7 p.m. Still plenty of clouds around San Antonio but no rain yet. Then as we get closer to 10 o'clock across the northern hill
Hill Country will be seeing that front move through. Still no rain in San Antonio. Even around midnight, around San Antonio, we could see an isolated shower, but it's really up in the Hill Country that we could see a broken line of storms. Then by 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, that's when we'll see some storms around San Antonio. Notice that rain is much more likely east of San Antonio and not likely west of San Antonio. We'll see that uh, isolated to widely scattered showers and storms moving through through about 5 o'clock in the morning. Then early tomorrow, we'll be looking at mostly cloudy skies and less humidity out there. So what about severe weather? Severe weather is not likely tonight. However, there is a chance that an isolated severe thunderstorm warning could be issued for these areas in pink here. What would the National Weather Service be looking for? Well, a broken line of storms, as I mentioned, the potential for gusty winds. That's what would be uh, the issue. This this kind of weather pattern doesn't support large hail, really only supports the potential there for gusty winds. Then tomorrow, 70 degrees for the high, a little bit warmer and muggy on Monday, but that potent front arrives Tuesday, knocking down our humidity, making it feel more like December. Cannot wait. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 917, 70 degrees out. Well, coming up, we're two weeks from Christmas Eve, but it's the most wonderful time of the year, actually people's favorite holiday. Mm. What different states are saying about it? We're going to go over our favorite snacks, too, so start thinking about this. Plus, a dramatic scene all caught on camera in California, how this insane rock slide ended. We're going to explain in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. So this morning, a dramatic video surfacing showing a rock slide crashing into a truck near a beach in California. It started when a massive chunk of earth slid down onto the area known as Rat Beach and, Pal and Palos Verdes Estates. Friday morning, police say a passerby called in the first slide at 10 a.m. A county maintenance worker rushed to the area, parked his truck next to the lifeguard tower, but within minutes, a second slide came down pushing the truck more than 30 feet. The maintenance worker was not injured, and L.A. County lifeguards say no one else was close by. All right, so it's a story we've been talking about for a couple of weeks now. Out in Hawaii, the lava flow continues from Mauna Loa Volcano. It started erupting last week, and that's got people from around the world flocking to see this up close. I mean, it is amazing, and for some photographers, it actually means very little sleep. For just a few minutes of perfect lighting, officials have repeatedly warned folks of the dangers of getting too close to the lava. It seems pretty obvious. Don't go to the hot lava. But uh, island officials and researchers continue to study the lava flow. Right now, they say luckily no homes or businesses are threatened. But Stunning I mean, photos. Amazing pictures of quote unquote perfect lighting. But look at that. That is amazing. But, Beautiful. you know, be safe. Don't be if, safe. if you see lava coming towards you. Move away. So don't get don't get trapped out there. Yeah, be yeah. safe. Time now, 922, 70 degrees out. Still to come, what would you do if you saw a unicorn? So this story of one little girl's dream to see one, that's coming up. Welcome back. It's that time of year when you can treat yourself and indulge in all things sweet for Christmas. We were just talking about this. Calories don't count on Christmas, right? Apparently not. Okay, so Wise Voter, which is a bipartisan educational platform, says nothing really to do with, you know, bipartisan or election things. It's actually about America's favorite Christmas treats. And they found this year it's pretty cheesy. I'm looking at, no, go ahead. Oh, we're go, oh you're, go, you're going up close and personal. So yeah. taking a look at the results. A majority of the United States favors cheesecake as their top tier Christmas treat. Oh, do we only have these four choices? Uh, sugar oh, cookies. Here we go. Oh, there we go. We got the full list. Sugar cookies in 17 states. Montana and North Dakota choosing cinnamon rolls. Okay. Alaska, North Carolina, and Oregon went with a sweet drink. Instead, they chose eggnog as their topic. So, Sarah Costa, what are you going with here? I, I might have to say I hope we don't go to camera because chocolate I'll just chip cookies real close. aren't okay. even on there. Uh, okay, we got sugar cookies, cheesecake, eggnog, hot chocolates on here. That's a good one. I don't know. Maybe it, it just depends how it's done because cheesecake mm. can be done well or not done. Our producer, Colin, apparently makes the greatest cheesecake ever. I don't know. Okay. All right, let's from cheesecake to unicorns. <laughs> All unicorns have a place to frolic freely in Los Angeles County. Officials there have given a young girl named Madeline a pre-approved unicorn license. Mm. So Madeline sent a handwritten letter to the county 
asking for permission to keep a unicorn just in case she ever found one. So the county posted Madeline's letter on Facebook and approved her request. They also sent her a stuffed unicorn to have until a real one finally appears in her backyard. And I was reading this story and she says I, she thinks she's going to find one in Ireland. And I wonder if it's legally binding. Like, can we reach out to Judge Sakai or uh, <laughs> Judge Nelson Wolf and get a, a unicorn statute? Let, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, time now, 927, 70 degrees We have to out. find one first, though. So. Okay, still ahead at 930, we're gathering details on an Uber driver caught in the crossfire after he and his passenger were shot while driving. And for many, the holiday season means more time in the kitchen with family and friends. How you can get your kitchen ready for cooking those holiday feasts, we're going to explain next. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday, 9.31 this morning. It is December 10th. It really has felt more like October or September um, 10th. Yeah, because we have the AC on blasting right now in the studio. I can feel it. It's not blasting it. for the no, record. It is not blasting. I'm going to go check. the. Th I'm, I'm freezing. It's like what, set at 70? I would 69? say it's set at like 71. Which is weird because that's pretty much the temperature outside, so we're... <laughs> I know, but it's so cold in here, but I mean, I guess you need it right now. It's like that weird time where you don't know what to do. Like, do we turn the AC off? Do right. we leave it on? It's the same temperature inside as it outside. And it's humid, too. Yeah. Today's going to be a lot similar to the last several days, warm and humid. But hey, before we get to the weather... I want to show you a picture of me and Max Massey. Earlier this week, we were at the Salvation with the Salvation Army with our KSAT Red Kettle great ringing the bell. It was a great turnout, wasn't it, Max? It was. It was. I want to give a big shout out to everyone who showed up and donated. Yeah. We had a lot of great responses, and this was not us excluding Sarah Costa for the record. Yeah, I wish she was supposed to be there. there. <laughs> yeah, but hey, if you weren't able to get out there and uh, put some money in for the Salvation Army, scan this QR code. It'll take you to KSAT's uh, page for our Red Kettle Drive. Any little bit helps, and we would we would love uh, to see our community getting behind the, the Salvation Army there. So thank you. So so much outside right now it is cloudy and muggy it's 70 degrees at the airport in san antonio 72 in new Braunfels. we're seeing a little bit of sun for floresville and for seguin right now but elsewhere it's 66 in bernie 66 in bandera and a wider view here yeah there's a little clearing across the coastal plains here today's going to be a mainly cloudy day with a few peaks of sunshine out there and humid temperatures are going to climb to 79 degrees for the high temperature south winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. But a big thing to consider is that even though today is going to be pretty much the same, we do have high mountain cedar. Mountain cedar is high for the first time this season. This is the today's pollen count. And on top of that, molds are moderate. So if you do suffer from allergies, know that that's going to be a bit of an issue. What are we going to talk about today in the forecast? Well, today more of the same, humid and warm, high temperature near 80 degrees. But tonight, some changes. A weak cold Cold front is going to arrive in the overnight hours. A few storms are possible, some of which could be on the strong side, although that's not necessarily likely, but that's still something that I want to cover in the forecast in just a few minutes. And we'll talk about how tomorrow behind that front, it's not going to be as humid, still cloudy, but there's quite a few details I'd like to iron out for you. I've got that forecast coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Now back to that late breaking news we've been tracking throughout the day. A deadly explosion that rocked the city's south sites and a neighbor scrambling, trying to figure out exactly what happened. All right, we're going to head out to Jonathan Cotto, who is live on the scene with the latest. Good morning, Max. Good morning, Sarah. We have a little bit of activity here, a little bit of movement on scene. This is the 9700 block of South Presa. We have folks here arriving right now uh, outside of the gates of K-Bar. And I also would like uh, photojournalist Stephen Chavez to uh, spin the camera around to show you here a little bit of the work that's being done outside of uh, property lines. Uh, I've been told that these gentlemen here have been asked to turn off uh, the water valves, to turn off the water supply onto the property. The reason for that is still unknown, but that is the instruction that they received. This is, of course, uh, a situation that's been under investigation all night long, all morning long. The explosion 
coming from inside of this fence line that you see on your screen right now. But I'd like to take a look at that scene earlier this morning. Now, we know San Antonio police are now telling us that this is an arson investigation and they are working in support of the San Antonio Fire Department, who is spearheading uh, investigation efforts. Now, again, police responding to the 9700 block of South Presa. We're not too far from Brook City Base. This is on the city's south side. Now, the cause of that explosion is still unknown, uh, but we are um, hearing that we well, we received confirmation of one person dead. Police uh, tell us that. That, uh, they are hoping to be able to wrap up on this investigation in this investigation now that, that there's daylight again they are working on determining the cause of what's happened here uh, again this is private property we're talking 75 acres roughly of land so where this investigation is taking place is still unknown and unclear from where we're standing but of course Max Sarah this is a situation that we're gonna stay on top of we've been here all morning and we're gonna continue to to stay here until more information is made available Reporting live from the city south side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Jonathan, great reporting out there. Thank you. To some top stories we've been following this morning, an Uber driver caught in the crossfire after he and his passenger were shot while driving. San Antonio police were called around 2 in the morning to the Red Roof Inn on Northwest Loop 410. Police say a passenger of the Uber got into an altercation at a restaurant. And while in the car going home, the suspects from that altercation pulled up next to the Uber and opened fire, hitting the Uber driver three times and the passenger once. The driver pulled into the hotel, called for help. Both victims are expected to be okay. Meanwhile, a man in his 20s dead after being shot and killed on the city's east side. San Antonio police tell us that this all happened on the 3300 block of Roland Avenue last night. Officers believe the man was being chased through the apartment complex in the area. They say the alleged shooter jumped a fence and shot the man before running off with a woman. Both the 21 year old suspect and that 18 year old woman that was with the suspect both have been caught. We also know a weapon has been recovered on the scene and that victim pronounced dead on the scene. Right now we are waiting to learn who exactly is responsible and what comes next. Also this morning, Grant Wall, one of the most well-known soccer writers in the United States, died while covering the Argentina-Netherlands match at the World Cup. ABC's Lama Hassan has more on the deadly collapse in Qatar. This morning, the sudden death of legendary American sports writer Grant Wall in Qatar covering the World Cup, three days after celebrating his 49th birthday. Wall dying Friday night after collapsing in his seat at the match between Argentina and Netherlands. His wife Celine Gounder tweeting, I'm in complete shock. On Thursday, Wall saying on his podcast that he had bronchitis and has been to a medical clinic twice, including that day. So many journalists have uh, got a crazy cough. It sounds like a death rattle sometimes. Wall saying he had tested negative for COVID-19. I can't wait to be on the other side of what I have. Wall, whose brother identifies as a member of the LGBTQ community, making international headlines of his own during his coverage of the World Cup, tweeting this photo two weeks ago after he says security initially refused to let him into the stadium, allegedly telling him, you have to change your shirt, it's not allowed. The sports writer openly criticizing FIFA and wasn't afraid to say how Qatar was running the games throughout the World Cup. His career spanning decades, including 24 years at Sports Illustrated. In 2002, while working on this Sports Illustrated cover story about LeBron James, when James was a junior in high school. Last night, the superstar remembering him. Um, very fond of, of Grant. Anytime his name will come up, I'll always think, think back to me as a teenager and having Grant. Um, you know, in our building um, down at St. V's. Now, no further details have been released about Grant Wall's death. The U.S. State Department says they are in close contact and engaged with senior Qatari officials so that his family's wishes are fulfilled. Lama Hassan, ABC News, London. Back here at home, there's so much excitement in and around San Antonio. The Alamo Dome, home to so many fun, electric, and captivating events. And with 2023 right around the corner, there is so much more on the way. Richard Oliver with the Alamo Dome, set to join us live on Leading SA tomorrow at 8 a.m. We're going to be talking about what the Dome has meant to San Antonio, a preview of 2023, and the huge impact of UTSA's success, and of course, the XFL and the Brahmas. If you have any questions you'd like to submit, Head to KSAT.com, the Leading SA section. Join us tomorrow, 8 a.m., for our full conversation.
Time now, 940, 70 degrees out. Still ahead, we've already covered favorite holiday treats. Oh my gosh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> but what about your favorite holiday candy? Oh. All right, hear what each state is rooting for. That's coming up. Plus, the holiday season means more time in the kitchen for so many people. How you can get your kitchen ready for those holiday feasts. Can somebody Ooh. please bring me some peppermint bark? Oh, okay. Oh, sounds so good right now. Not feeling kind of good is the weather. It's 70 degrees, muggy outside. Sarah Spivey says, hey, in three days, things are going to change. She'll let us know about that when we come back. Well, the holiday season is here, which means we're all probably going to be spending more time in the kitchen. All right, so do you cook or is it the husband? Uh, more, more him. Okay. He's a great chef. For he's those he's who way better. <laughs> All right, but before you start making that family feast, you're going to make sure that your kitchen is ready. So here are some tips in this morning's Ask Angie segment. From family dinners to gingerbread housemaking, there's no shortage of holiday kitchen activities, and there are several things to keep in mind to make sure your kitchen is ready for the holiday season. If your family is like mine, the holiday season is always a time for cooking and baking, and ovens are absolutely essential to that. Now is a great time to make sure that your oven is clean and everything's in working order. If you do happen to have an old or an inefficient oven or one that's just not working so well, now might be a great time to think about replacing that, especially with an energy efficient or energy star rated appliance, which now can be eligible for a rebate under the Inflation Reduction Act. Make sure your kitchen is well stocked and ready to take on the holidays. Sharpen your knives, refill your spice drawer, and restock any staple ingredients you may need. This is also the perfect time to grab some fun holiday kitchen items like cookie cutters or a pie dish. Be strategic and thoughtful about what projects you take on before the holiday season. Large projects like a total kitchen remodel might not be able to be done in time and fully wrapped up before the holiday season is upon us. If you do want to think about refreshing your kitchen, small scale projects like repainting or refinishing a cabinet or even adding new fixtures, those can all be done in a smaller time frame and should be ready ahead of the holiday season. It's a good idea to give your kitchen one last deep clean before the holidays. You can either clean the kitchen yourself or bring in a pro to help. This is also a great time to clean any holiday specific dinnerware that has been sitting in your cabinets for the past year. Finally, make sure to give your home a deep clean before all the festivities get started. And if you clean before you decorate, it won't look as messy. Are all your decorations up? You're good yep. to go? Are I'm you hosting go. Christmas dinner? No. No? I go home. We <laughs> don't even home. have a Christmas dinner. We just kind of have like a Christmas snacks. Okay. What about you, Sarah Spivey? Christmas snacks? Uh, yeah, I like to make like a... What's that? Oh my gosh, like a Chex Mix. Oh. It's nice for Christmas snacks. Okay, yeah. feel free to bring Spivey's in leftovers. The best chef. She's, oh gosh. She's the, the real cook here. Whatever. Real MVP. I did make some chicken schnitzel last night with a caper lemon butter. But <laughs> In the great words but. of our producer, Colin, she's cooking up a great forecast. Hey, there we go. Yeah. Well, although today is more of the same, so I don't know if you've really enjoyed this weather, but, you know, we're going to have cloudy, uh, muggy weather with a few peaks of sunshine out there. But really, the big change is overnight. Overnight, we'll have a weak cold front that'll bring in a few storms possible, some of which could be on the stronger side. So we'll take a look at that. And tomorrow night, not as humid, still cloudy, but let's start with that first headline here. More of the same 70 degrees outside winds from the southeast at about 5 to 10 miles per hour and dew points are uh, up there too in the mid 60s. Let's take a look at your case at 12 hour forecast. Temperatures are going to be climbing steadily into the mid to upper 70s by about noon and then in the afternoon right around 80 degrees for the high temperature 3 4 o'clock. And yeah, tonight is going to be pretty mild too. temperatures just in the 70s, but it's after midnight that we could start to see some changes all from this cold front, which is across parts of North Texas right now. It's very weak, but you can see that it is producing some rain. So let me take you through the future cast today. The rain will be from Dallas Fort Worth out to San Angelo up to Waco. This is a snapshot at seven o'clock tonight. Again, no rain in San Antonio during the day, even at 10 o'clock tonight. It's not going to rain in San Antonio. Most of that rain will be up across parts of the northern hill country and even north of 
Austin. But by about midnight, we'll start to see a broken line of storms across the hill country. Once again, we're going to be on the tail end of this. Bulk of the rain is going to be north of San Antonio and east of San Antonio. But by 2 o'clock in the morning, that's when you could have some rumbles of thunder uh, from this broken line of storms. Notice how more robust that storm activity is east of San Antonio, while west of San Antonio, little to no rain is expected. Snapshot at 4 o'clock in the morning, still some thunder showers around San Antonio. By the pre-dawn hours, we could have isolated rain around San Antonio, but Sunday itself should be dry, although a little cloudy and uh, less humid, though, and that's the key point there for, for Sunday. Again, here's a summary of our rain timeline. We expect any, any time from pretty much 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., that broken line of storms around San Antonio overnight and early tomorrow. Planning for a few rumbles of thunder overnight, so if you're a light sleeper or your kids are light sleepers, know that there could be a couple of rumbles of thunder. And what we'll be watching for is the potential for an isolated severe thunderstorm warning. Isolated being the key word there. Severe weather is not likely, but there is the possibility for one or two severe thunderstorm warnings. If one of those thunderstorm warnings uh, is issued, it would likely be issued for gusty winds as the main threat there. Otherwise, humid today, but once that front moves through, not quite as humid. Dew points will be in the upper 50s, low 60s tomorrow, which is a welcome change. Then as we look ahead to the week, our high temperature tomorrow will only be 70 behind that front. We'll have some uh, morning fog and drizzle Monday. Monday will be one of those humid, warm days again, but our last one for a while because Tuesday, a more potent cold front arrives. That'll set our mornings down into the 40s, afternoons into the 60s with low humidity. All right, so what do we think about a car wash? You mean okay. Wednesday? Uh, Tuesday. Okay. Uh, right after no afternoon on Tuesday, car washing would be good. Desperately need one. I have What's been four years for you now? <laughs> oh my God. There was like a good four year stretch where Sarah she was like, Am I supposed to do that? I never wash my car. It's actually pretty disgusting. Inside's clean. Inside's clean. Just Dog hair. Dog hair. Yeah. I don't know about that. Time Can we move on from that? It's 50, 70 degrees out. <laughs> All right, taking a look outside a trans guide. Uh, you know, we only had one issue this morning, but it has since cleared up. We had a deadly car fire on 10 and 37 southbound that has since cleared. No other issues popping up on our end over here. We'll let you know if anything does later on. And just ahead, a famous holiday train is back in time for Christmas. We'll show you a real life Polar Express just after the break. Holiday season is about more than just candy, but it is the sweetest part. So what's your favorite? Right, so taste obviously can vary from person to person, even state to state. So CandyStore.com yeah, surveyed 16,000 customers, distributors, and manufacturers to create a list of favorites, and some might surprise you. Peppermint bark, okay. my favorite. Your favorite. A traditional treat, no longer oh. as popular as it was. What is wrong with people? The kids have passed you up. Oh my gosh. And so it lost a top spot in six states, including California and right here in Texas. Oh. Candy canes are also losing their flavor in four states. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, me too. Kit Kats and Starburst are becoming Christmas favorites. Interesting. That's not a... And along with Reese's Mini Cups and Snickers. I'm still going peanut M&Ms. Uh, I don't know, like peppermint Wait. bark. Uh, Okay, so another tradition on the tracks has returned to the northern parts of the U.S. and Canada. Canadian's Pacific holiday train is back on the rails for the first time since the pandemic. This it's awesome. awesome. It's decked out with Christmas lights. And inside one of the train's boxcars is a stage of live holiday music performers. Oh. This was one of the train stops in Minnesota this week. The holiday train's mission is to advocate for food and security awareness. It's a free event, but every location, a local food bank sets up a collection station awesome. where people are encouraged to give cash or food donations. That is so cool. So it's the Polar Express and it helps people. It's, it's awesome. This is fantastic. All right, time now, 955, 71 degrees out. Here's what David Elder's cooking up today on Texas Eats. You got a pork dish here that's super popular. Yeah, right? so this is the kare kare. So this is um, like in the Philippines, it'll probably be made or in a household be made with oxtail. 
We actually took that a step up. We actually initially used brisket because it had kind of the same uh, characteristics as oxtail. The way you would eat this dish, you get a little bit of uh, the sauce, a little bit of meat, the vegetables, and then this here's a homemade shrimp paste. It's uh, called bagaong alamang, and you put that on top of that, it kind of uh, acts like a flavored salt and really um, uh, enhances that flavor. How yeah. do you go in? Yeah. Uh, I'd probably get a uh, yeah spoon and fork and like okay. you know Filipinos kind of we don't really do like knives and stuff. Uh, <laughs> you show we, me, we, man. We spoon and pork here. You do it, it so first, yeah. and you show me what's so, yeah, going let's on. Let's just uh, probably just break off a little of this here real quick. Yeah. There you go. This looks so good. Here we go. I love that. Molds are moderate, but the big story right now is that mountain cedar is high, past 1,700 today. And that's going to affect you all day long if you are allergic to mountain cedar. Otherwise, it's going to be a warm and humid today with a high temperature near 80 degrees, south winds at 5 to 15. Tomorrow, only 70, but overnight tonight, scattered thunder showers are possible along the front. We'll keep an eye on things for you. Much cooler during the second half of next week, feeling a lot more like December with chilly mornings and cool afternoons. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. We have Texas seats coming up in about 10 seconds. We got Golden Burgers, tacos. We're eating Golden Burgers and Barbacoa tacos. And barbacoa. Yum. Have a great day. Have a good Saturday.